Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon the Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another Real Housewives of Potomac, season eight, episode 20, and this is Reunion Part Two. And before we get started, <clears throat> let me just state this. This really should have just been only one part. So there did not need to be three parts. And the way I was disappointed towards the end of this reunion to see that there was going to be another part of this reunion. Child. Okay. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the review. So we start off this review where we picked up at where... Mia is, um, so Wendy just dropped the tea that Gordon was talking, has been talking to, um, her and her husband about the fact that, um, Ink is questioning the paternity of, um, her son, of her son, Jeremiah, and thinking that this is his son versus it being Gordon's son. And, um, real quick, um, this situation is child the way she is acting like there's no such thing uh as dna tests this could have been resolved forever ago and it's giving messy it's giving very very messy and but her excuse is she claims that she knows her body and she did it iui and is definitely gordon's son like she in her mind doesn't have any doubts that is gordon's son and the way the other ladies are kind of going back and forth under their breath, like <sighs> about this, um, under their breath, of course. So Ashley's saying, well, I mean, Jeremiah does look like, um, Gordon and Candace is like, but Gordon Inc. look alike. So, <laughs> which let's call a thing a thing. It's clear that Mia has a physical type and they do look alike, like real talk. Um, Ink does definitely look like he could be like Gordon's like son. So it, yeah, but anyway, so while all this is happening though, um, Karen interjects and she's like, look, can we like not talk about this anymore? Um, the, you know, Jeremiah can, it will grow up and see this and this isn't really cool. And also, um, we need to keep the kids not involved in this, which she's not wrong. It was giving super messy and they're kind of a hot mess for even bringing this up, not having the foresight of thinking, okay, Jeremiah will see this one day and her, and his friends will see this one day. Like, it's not really okay to like put this tea out there, but at the same time we watch reality TV for mess, right? Right. So anyway, from there we go on to, um, the Karen and Mia of it all. And, um, it comes a question about is, did Karen call Mia ho or not? And Karen tried to like go around it, but yeah, long story less long, she called Mia ho. And then from there we talk about Mia having money prior to, um, dealing with Gordon, like, heavy heavy and it turns out according to mia she and um sh um she had three grandparents that passed away and that's where the inheritance came from when she met gordon the thing is we don't know if we should believe this or not because it's mia and girl i mean she'd be lying so who knows if this is true or not but let's assume it is and then from there we do talk about her and Gordon owing rent at a festive property and getting a vic and getting an eviction notice and all that. And I'll be honest, I knew about this. This was the thing that I knew about. Um, cause I did allude to knowing some things when it came to me and this was a thing that I knew. Um, I'm not going to say how I knew this, but I definitely knew this. So it was interesting that it came up in the reunion. But in her case, she did shut it down and say, she's like, well, it did happen. But the reason why it happened is because Gordon refused to leave. So this was, um, I guess, after they were separated and he wouldn't move, he wouldn't leave the property, but she did. So even though it's in her name too, it really should only be in his name, like basically. And then Andy did ask um, Mia, like, hey, when, so when are you going to be getting a divorce? And she says she cannot get a divorce prior to June because she needs, um, her and Gordon needs to liquidate all their businesses they have together prior to doing so. 
Um, and then Mia does state that she feels a way about Wendy and Candace not reaching out to her when the news of the separation broke out. And Candace states that she just didn't know how to navigate it and she just did not want to be involved. And they both justify it saying like, hey, there were some things that he was saying about you that he wanted us to expose and we never did that. And um, so that was our way of supporting you. And Mia's like, okay, whatever. But then Wendy's explanation, it's like, girl. And um, I will state this before we move on. This is, I think, part of everyone's frustration when it comes to this cast. You go from hating each other to like parting with each other and like uh, bumping boxes. Like it doesn't make any sense. And so, and even like under her breath, under Robin's breath, she mentions like, well, why don't y'all just like showing each other's like stuff to each other um, after that fight? Because Wendy's excuse to why she did not um, reach out to Mia is she states that her and Mia were not in a good place after at the end. And it's like, but that doesn't make any sense. We thought you moved past the Miami thing because that was a thing where my, where um, Mia um, threw a drink at Wendy in Miami. And this is the season before and she's bringing it back up. And it's just, it doesn't make sense. It's like, and Wendy for how educated she is, I will say this, the way she sometimes talks in circles and tries to justify things the math don't be mapping. I will definitely say that. And so I kind of sigh eye Wendy with her explanation because it didn't make sense, truthfully. Because Mia even says, like, even, like, Karen reached out to me and, like, Karen and I have been going back and forth the whole season. Um, and I think at the bare minimum, if you are good with her, you need to reach out to her. But if you're not good with her, don't do this fakery where you're good, but then you're not. And that's, I think, a lot of viewers' frustration when it comes to Wendy, including mine, even though I do like Wendy. And same thing with Candace. They kind of go back and forth with being cool, not being cool, being cool, not being cool. But since we don't see it all on camera, we're just like scratching your head like, what is this? Anyway. So then lastly, in this segment with Mia, uh, we find out that Mia's living in D.C. while Gordon's in Charlotte, but he's going to be moving next to Mia um, to basically help take care of the kids. So that is where this segment ends. So the next, so the next segment is Hotel, Hotel Giselle. And child, I, I was just not interested. <laughs> I'll be completely honest. But anyway, so this is where we talk about the fake relationship of her and um, Jason. And then also her relation and Grace going off to college. And then last but not least, um, the death of her dad. So the most, I guess, the most that came out of this segment really is her and her lack of emotions. Like, and I think this is the other reason why it makes it really hard for me to like Giselle and also really be interested in anything she has to say because she doesn't share or show any emotion. It's giving robot, and I don't understand that. And uh, anyway, so she does kind of go into detail about Grace going to college and... Um, then she does share the sentimental moments that came to her and her dad and the celebration of life. And while she's talking about all this, especially when it comes to um, her dad, Candace is crying. And Andy does stop things and ask, like, hey, Candace, why are you crying? And, and Mia, <laughs> oh, man, she wasn't really lying. But Mia was like, she cries with the wind, girl. I mean, child, she cries with the wind. Like, that's pretty much what uh, Mia said, which two things can be true. She really does do that. And um, she does state that, you know, it, it's hard that she, you know, lost her parent. Like, she feels for her. And they, Mia was like, and, and Andy and Mia in a roundabout way both were just like, well, I mean, it's very clear that Candace still cares because we know this. And for those who've been watching the show, Candace does want to be friends with all these women. It's Giselle who doesn't want to be friends with her and Wendy who doesn't want to be friends with her. It's what that is. But at the same time, huh, I really just wish Candace would 
not do the flip flop thing that she does because it is very confusing. So it makes it hard for us to, it makes it hard for there to be, um, you know, a certain way because how reactionary Candace is. Um, although it's great for the show, but now it's not anymore, clearly, because now they're not even talking to each other because the way Candace reacts, the girls, they, 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 don't have, they, they are not ready for it. They, they're never ready for it. And so from there, they talk about Giselle and her talking about Grace at the dinner table when they're in the DR. And um, the question came up to Karen about like, hey, do you feel like you should intervene more when they were making faces, Candace and Wendy, that is, while Giselle was talking? And Karen pretty much was like, no, not really. I mean, they're they're grown adults, which they are. And um, Candace is like, look, I, if you're talking, I don't care. Like, it wasn't the fact that um, Giselle's trying to weaponize her kids, that's the problem. And which is very much true. That was what Candace, what um, Giselle was trying to do and all that, trying to weaponize her kids, even though the reason why Wendy and Candace were pretty much making the faces is because of Giselle. It's not because it has anything to do with her kids. It's because it's Giselle. And then we talk about um, Giselle and Jason, which no one believes that relationship. And then apparently Giselle has other men, which... A lot of us thought that, and I kind of thought that, but she'll never show that part of herself on camera ever again, which is why I don't understand why she's still in the show when she doesn't show her whole entire life, but that's a whole nother thing. And then um, they talk about, has Giselle changed since her being married to Jamal Bryant versus today? And yeah, I guess, I mean, that was pretty much the segment when it came to Giselle. And... Yeah, I'll be honest. I was not really as interested because I don't think Giselle did enough to really have a segment this this reunion, but that's a whole nother thing. Other than that brief conversation when it comes to talking about Grace and um, her dad. Everything else they could have just left that on the they could have left that on the table. I mean seriously. So next we have Candace segment and we talk about Candace in her breast lump. She did. So we did find out that she actually did get a second opinion and the lump has went down. And um, the message message was to get checked. And so that that's pretty much it for that. And then they talk about from there, Candace and her tour and, you know, how successful it was. And it was a successful tour. Um, we found out that her largest venue that she did the tour in was a Fillmore. Um, in Silver Springs. So that was a pretty big deal for her. All the other tours, though, were main, mainly city winery tours, which I was aware of because she did have a city winery um, stop in Chicago and both legs of the tour. But then the interesting thing came up between Drew Sedora and her and why she was not really okay with having Drew on the tour again. And it turns out it was a thousand percent business related. And she, it was to the point where she kind of side-eyed, um, you know, um, Drew when it came to how Drew does business. And I kind of feeling that's what it was because Drew's business has always kind of been funny to me. I mean, let's to be completely honest, Drew Sedora on the show of Real Housewives of Atlanta, I've always just kind of thought all her money was a little funny, like. She's she's a ball of confusion. She is confusion and chaos. Like that is Drusador in a nutshell. And Candace basically was like, you know, it made me look at her differently. So we were not going to revisit us doing business together again like that, which I respected. And then um, Andy harkens back to that's actually what happened between Katy Perry and um, Taylor Swift. It was. Um, Katy Perry tries to steal one of, um, I guess, Taylor Swift's dancers. And that's what the song was all about. And that's my first time knowing about that. I was like, okay, the more you know. But interesting. Anyway, so then from there, they talk about Michael and the lawsuit. They didn't really talk about it as much as I wanted to. They really mainly focused on the fact of did Ashley know about the lawsuit. Not so much about the lawsuit. 
Um, but yeah, so Candace doesn't believe that Ashley knew about the lawsuit. Candace's mom believes that she knew about the lawsuit and hell, I think that Ashley knew about the lawsuit. There's nothing, there's no reason why she wouldn't know about the lawsuit. And even what, even what Ashley said, um, in one of the last, one of the fewer, uh, fewer last episodes of the season, she mentioned that Michael's threatened to sue her. So I'm sure, I, I, I guess I, I don't understand how Ashley wouldn't know, but anyway, um, uh, from there, they talk about her and Giselle and her and Giselle go back and forth. Um, and one thing that caught my eye and got me was just Giselle's like, get out of here. And one of the things that they were talking about and Candace is like, I'm out. And I think that's when Candace said, I think at that moment, at that moment, Candace was like, I'm quitting this show. I think that's when it really clicked with her that she was quitting the show. Um, we kind of could tell in the first um, episode of the reunion from before that that's what was happening. But I think this definitely confirmed it. And then from there, we talk about Candace and Robin yet again. And again, long story less long, there was no resolution with this. But then we did have at least another conversation with the colorism of it all. And again, Bravo, I really, will, really wish there should there really should be a conversation on colorism. Wendy's kind of against the conversation because she says that not all the ladies on the stage have the range for it. But if you have a proper moderator, I think it will work. But and not Andy Cohen. You need to have someone who is um, well has a range to talk to others who do not have as much of a range to like just educate on it. But also too, at the end of the day. Giselle, both Giselle and um, Robin are trying to make it where Candace is accusing them of being colorist when Candace from day one has said that she never thought that they were colorists. Um, she thinks that, I mean, she thinks that the show projects it, which it does. It definitely does. As a viewer, it does project it. And a lot of the Bravo universe um, that watches these shows they yeah they're colorists I, I i know that for a fact that's a whole entire thing um and i guess also too i kind of just wish it would have been called out a little bit more that i think a lot of it does have to do with the fandom and without blaming their fans just kind of making it a thing like hey there is some things that are a little bit off I don't think that was called off, called out nearly enough, but we end where Candace and Robin are going back and forth yet again, um, about, um, Candace believing that Robin was doing a cover up. And again, this was not resolved. And I really wish they would just stop talking about it. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. And Robin's not letting it go. Um, Candace has apologized for some of the things, but she's standing, she's standing on a lot of the things and I haven't heard Robin apologize about anything. So there's that anyway. Um, next. Side note. Um, the NECA was really just not really seeing much in this reunion at all. Um, she, so before the break was over with, she was talking to her husband prior to getting on stage. Cause this is a hus husband segment that's ha coming up and <clears throat> behind the scenes, she's still demasculating this man. And I just, I hope when they do get to the neck of sex, um, segment next, um, episode of the reunion, they call that out because she really does it a lot and it's actually cringe it's giving cringe i don't think it's going to get brought up but it is cringe anyway so the husbands the, it, the break is over with the husbands are there and so the pleasantries are happening andy you know talks to all the husbands so that includes um ray gordon um um ike happy eddie and um chris so they're all there and so 
the first thing after the pleasantries get out the way, it, by, side note, we find out that Eddie's business, Happy Eddie, is doing very, very well, and it's good to be about the campus, um, so we do find that out. But anyway, so we first then talk about Mia and um, the DR um, talk that she mentioned. So what Mia said during the season when they were on their way to the DR that she was a girlfriend at once going to the DR and then now she's a wife going there. And what she means was she was a side chick that was coming there. And this is all about Gordon, by the way. So she was going to the DR with Gordon and um, when she was a side chick and then when she became a wife, she went there um, as well. And while all this is happening, and I wish it would have been called out, but no one called it out. Karen and her expression, she's like, I love you, Ray. Because <laughs> I think at this moment, she's finding out more and more. Like, I think she already knew this um, from before when she brought it up. Because for those who don't remember, Karen brought up that Ray was going to the DR a lot. And we're, it's, a, it's safe to assume that it was for extracurricular activities of um, the, uh, the opposite sex. So, unbeknownst to Ray, Mia's pretty much exposing the tea of what happened without like it being like direct. <laughs> but not, you know, Mia being involved. But that's just, apparently that is a thing. Where the guys go to the DR with their girlfriends. And the girlfriends stay in one villa. And then the wives stay in another villa. And they can both, like, just all be there. And I'm like, child, that is messy. Um, from there, we talk about Chris and the fallout. And Chris was like, and then the question came up of, so you weren't really around as much this season. He was like, it was very intentional. He's like, I'm not going to be around people who don't want me to be around. And um, the Giselle and Chris thing kind of happened again. And Chris kind of got her together very quickly. It was like a non-issue. Chris was like not having it. Chris was prepared at this reunion. He's like, I am not here for the BS. You're not going to gaslight me. None of this is going to happen. And Chris kind of ate. He he did eat. he did eat. Um, and then from there, the conversation um, switched from where is Juan, and none of the husbands wanted to address it. But um, Gordon did state, it's like you know, I don't want to be messy and address it, but I do think it would have been important for him to be here because I'm here, and this is my ex. This isn't even my wife. This is going to be my, this is my soon to be ex wife, and I'm here. Which no lies be no lies told there, and then from there Gordon um, was going to go and say something, and it seemed like it was going to be a bombshell, and then it ends to to be continued. In the way I was disappointed, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I thought there was only going to be two parts to this reunion. There's a three parts, but the way. The first, this reunion and the reunion before, this is so lackluster. I'm just, I mean, I know this sounds horrible, but I am ready for this season to be over with so we can wrap it in a bow and be done. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl, Sharon, aka Massage, uh, ah, Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye. Side note, so for those who are not aware, I did not mention this before in another video, but this review and then another review, um, and, and even though in another week or so, whatever, um, I'm not going to be on camera, so there's that. Um, there's reasons why, and you'll find out. But anyway, bye now.